Good evening, folks. It's the man. First name Craig, last name Fletcher. Same shirt, same hat, same spiffy mustache, and same books behind me. All right, today we are going to talk about conservation of energy with the rotation. And afterwards, if you want to continue the fun, you can come by and grab one of my spiffy books. Maybe, whoa, maybe not that one. Not that one. That's, that's from The Secret Stash. Uh, how about this one? The City of Splinter Gods. It's about gods being splinter. All right, folks, have fun. And with that bit of amusement, You've seen this system before. There's a pulley that is pinned at the center. There's an arm that's been welded to it. And there's a lump at the end. We're going to have the system begin initially at rest and angularly accelerate downward. Here is the video that shows it happen. And here's the whole thing superimposed. So what we're trying to figure out is what the angular velocity is and what the velocity of the center of mass of the arm is after the system has angularly accelerated down through the vertical. Which means that this is a conservation of energy problem. What's tricky about it is trying to figure out the potential energy at the beginning and the kinetic energy at the end. So looking at the lump, you can see that its final position is going to be here, which is where I would take y equal to zero. The distance between there and where it started is going to be this distance, which is going to be the length of the arm plus the radius, L plus R, plus, okay, so this is R plus L, this angle's theta, so this is going to be R plus L sine of theta. You sum those two, and it gives you the Y coordinate to start with. So the initial, ang uh, the initial potential energy is going to be the mass times gravity times that coordinate, which is going to end up, ultimately, by the time we do all the math, equaling 1.95 MGL. A similar evaluation for the arm is going to see the arm center of mass starting here, a distance L over 2 plus R times sine of theta above the horizontal line here. And it's going to swing down to this position here uh, above this horizontal line. That distance is going to be L over 2 plus R. So we put all this information into the potential energy function, mg times the y-coordinate, we come up with this. So starting to write it all out, the initial kinetic energy is zero. The net potential energy at the beginning of the interval is just the sum of the two potential energy quantities we just figured out. There's no friction in the system, so there's no extraneous work being done. The kinetic energy at the end of the interval is going to be the sum of the kinetic energies rotation-wise due to the lump, the arm, and the pulley as they swing through the vertical. And lastly, there's no potential energy at the end of the interval. Interestingly, we can figure out the kinetic energy of the little uh, lump in one of two ways. We can either think of it as simply a point mass that's moving along with some velocity, so it would have translational kinetic energy, one-half mv squared. The velocity of this point is going to end up equaling r omega, where r is equal to this distance, 0.3l, plus this distance, l, or 1.3l times omega. If you square that and multiply by half m, it would give you the kinetic energy. The other alternative is to think of it as a point mass that's rotating in a pure rotation about an axis that is little r units away, where again little r would be 0.3l plus l. Um, the moment of inertia for that rotation, because the kinetic energy would be 1 half i times omega squared, the moment of inertia for that rotational uh, motion would be that of a point mass. And for a point mass, the moment of inertia is m little r squared little r again would be 0.3l plus l. You put that in, you do the squaring, you do the math, you come up with the same kinetic energy. To get the kinetic energy of the pulley, you need to know what the moment of inertia about the pin is for the pulley, 
if we assume that the pulley is acting like a disc, that'll be a half mr squared, putting in 0.3 L4R, we're going to end up with this. And figuring out the kinetic energy of the arm as it swings down um, about the pin, we would need to know what the moment of inertia was of the arm about the pin. And to do that, we could use the parallel axis theorem. So that's what I've done here with all the math, and it turns out to be this value here. If we put all that information into our final conservation of energy relationship, this was the potential energy quantity. This was the kinetic energy quantity at the end of the interval with all the various bits and pieces of information put in. A little bit of canceling of L's. This is the final angular velocity as the, as the system passes through the vertical. And if you wanted to figure out what the velocity of the center of mass of the arm was, you'd have to take little r omega which would be capital R plus L over 2 times omega. Capital R was 0.3L. Basically, you do the math, and this is what you come up with. So, conservation of energy, very powerful if you're trying to figure out velocities with rotating bodies. That's it.